Hello again, Risk Community. Welcome to another video tutorial to help you get started and make the best of ServiceNow. My name is Eric Ferron in Santa Clara, California, and my guest today for this new episode is Scott Ferguson. Scott recently joined the Risk Business Unit as Director for Outbound Product Management. And today with him, we're going to be talking again about entities formerly known as profiles. You may remember that a few weeks back, we already had a video tutorial on the show with our guest speaker, Eric Lemartre, who gave us a pretty detailed deep dive on profiles. And there's been some changes in the world of profiles, uh, one of them that they are now called entities. And we also felt it would be a, a good reminder for everybody to take another look at what is now called entities with Scott. So good afternoon, Scott, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Eric. It's my pleasure to be here. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that the profiles, the old term that uh, everyone is aware of, knows about, um, but was a ServiceNow term, was not recognized within the industry. Uh, there's been a, a change in the terminology to bring it more in line with what people would understand. So the second thing we're going to talk about today is why entities are important. Why do we need them? How should we set them up? Why people have struggled with understanding the concept within ServiceNow. And thirdly, we're gonna to try to give some examples of how people have used entities in their instances. You probably remember this slide from the previous session, and this slide was really a depiction of how the scoping process worked within ServiceNow. Basically, the entities can be defined as those people those places, those objects or things that we need to manage risk with. It's the things that we're going to have to apply controls to. It's the things or the people or the places that we need to be able to audit as part of an engagement. And in most cases, Eric, as I work with different customers around the globe, when people are struggling to grasp the concept of an entity, I ask them, I'll say, well, show me your control matrix or show me your risk matrix. And typically it's a spreadsheet. And I'll say, well, read the first line to me. And they'll say something like, well, all web servers need to have certain ports closed. Or they'll say something like all critical financial systems need to adhere to change management. And I tell them to stop right there. They just defined the entities. It was all critical financial servers need to be follow the change process. That's a control that needs to be applied to a specific set of entities. Excellent. I think this, this really clarifies everything. So we are going to be looking at some examples now, right? Yes. So let's, let's go to a couple. We're going to start pretty high, and we'll go a little bit deeper as we go here. So the first example, an object or a thing in any industry. Things like all servers have to be configured the same way. In other systems and in traditional ways of doing GRC, what would happen is the auditor would come in and they would take a sample of records and they say all servers have to be configured this way. And when they would find one that wasn't configured that way, they would fail the control test when the reality is it was only one server. Now with entities, right, we're able to say, let's assign this hardening control to each one of these systems. And then we can go through this exercise to say, well, of those 10,000 servers, 9,999 of them were all compliant, and we can really then focus in on the one thing that was not. We can keep the individual owner of those servers accountable as opposed to then penalizing the entire organization for one particular area that may have uh, broken down in the process. Before we had entity, you know, we may say something like, you know, all banks have to follow some process. They all need to be compliant. And what happens when you go through an audit or you go through a series of control tests is you find out that you've got some random system that people really don't care about when it comes to being mission critical to the bank. It has to do with hosting the cafeteria menu. You may have people upset internally, but it's not going to affect the business. Well, they go through this audit because that system didn't follow change management the whole bank fails that particular audit. With entities, we can start to segregate these. These are the ones we really care about, and we're going to associate a particular control. What are those assets, those systems, those people, places, and things that aren't going to be compliant? And when we go through that particular audit process, we can see that when that system, that application that wasn't adhering to the process, we can focus in on holding them accountable to what they need to do. The customers are really going to care whether or not 
there's proper controls around the financial systems. Are they protecting my money? And when an auditor reports to the street, in this case, they could say, yes, they've got proper controls in place, realizing that there are some internal things that they need to be able to address. Let's talk about this in a non-IT way. I was working with one organization before they had entities. They had certain requirements saying that every one of their locations that would store drugs, they, maybe a pharmacy, and they may have certain drugs on hand that have got federal guidelines and they have to have material safety data sheets posted. Well, in this case, when you would go through a compliance activity, managing that for an organization was painful. They'd have to send emails to every location manager and say, do you have all of your stuff associated? You know, and they manage this back and forth, maybe with shared drives and email and, and spreadsheets and making sure every location was doing exactly what they uh, were supposed to do was kind of difficult. In many cases, things would slip through the cracks and then when an audit would happen, they would fail. With entities, we can make this much easier and things aren't going to fall in through the crack. So what happens here is you generate these entities, in this case, is a location. It's not a server. It's not an IT thing that every location was an entity. And they could associate controls to that entity like it needs to have material safety data sheets or every employee has to have a background check or there has to be security cameras and there has to be a safe to store controlled substances at night. And each one of those controls would be assigned to the local owner or the local manager of that particular location who could then provide the evidence, could complete the tasks, provide the information for the control test that they needed, which in turn, things weren't going to fall through the cracks because they could easily report on the tasks and what locations are doing the things that they're supposed to do, what locations aren't, and they could make sure that all of their individual pharmacy locations were then compliant with the controls and they didn't miss anything. So one more example, working in sales in my previous stage of my career, there was a, a process where all of the salespeople needed to provide a particular certification. Now, this is an example where if a sales manager right, is, is not doing their job on the anti-corruption certificates, you could have a situation where there's a breakdown right, and the whole company could fail and it gets reported to the street and that would be a terrible, horrible thing. Well, if we do this through entities, we can look at it by geo or look at it by department or we can look at it by line of business and we can start assigning these out. And as the individuals go through adhering to or attesting to their control or providing the evidence for that particular control, saying that they've done that work, we can also then start seeing where there's a, a breakdown in the process. Do we have people that aren't getting it done in a timely manner? And we can actually see this as opposed to just having the whole organization pass fail. We can look at particular areas and then address those in a proactive manner based upon the performance of them pro completing their individual control tests. Thank you very much for this, Scott. So what would be your guidance and your advice for our audience to do right now? The first thing that I would have you do is look at the tutorial that was done recently around entities and familiarize yourself with it. Or maybe if you've watched it once, watch it again with the clarification or the, the shift in mindset that we've talked about in today's session and see if it helps you understand the functioning or how entities work going forward. The second thing I would do, I recommend you, you join the community. Go out to the community for service now, join the Governance Risk and Compliance Forum and post your questions there and we can provide some additional guidance for you. And then the third thing that I would recommend you do, go look at that spreadsheet that is your control matrix now or your risk register and read the details of the individual lines. You're probably gonna find that you've already defined the entity types in the definitions that you have in your, your spreadsheets today. Scott, thank you very much for your time. I think that we are all now very clear about not only what entities are, but also the value that they provide to our businesses. So again, thank you so much. Thank you to the audience for being with us and listening to this. Remember that the slides are available in PDF format in the community. Scott and other ServiceNow specialists will be available on the GRC forum to answer your questions. Until next time, goodbye.